I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your truth, Father. I ask that all that you have planned will go forth today perfectly. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray that the word would cut the hearts of the people, Father, and that, mm -hmm. that repentance and healing would take place, Father. Mm -hmm. We thank you for being our rear and our front guard. We thank you that you sustain us. We thank you that there is none like you. Mm -hmm. I y'all would give you all the honor, praise, and glory this day. Father, I ask that I would be your trumpet today, that I would be your tool, Father, that I would be your instrument for your people. Father, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for loving my family. I thank you for the place in which you've called us and the work that you've called us to do. Yes. Abba Yah, I pray that you will be glorified in all things and we give you all the honor, all the praise, all the glory this day. And then Yeshua and Mashiach, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, we'll just jump right in. Um, Josiah, I'm live. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, today is the part two of part one, The Power of Obedience. Um, Suited and Booted is the subtitle. So, if we recap over um, part one, we have to remember that God calls us to be like his word. God calls us to be like his word. Um, we looked at Exodus 24 and 7. Then he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people. And they said, all that Yahuwah has said, we will do and be obedient. Uh, we talked about having to embrace our occupation. And we said, what can obedience be likened to? What can we liken obedience to? We talked about the law of worship, which says that we are changed neurobiologically and characterology, characterology to become like what we admire, worship, and spend time watching and assimilating. Like we become like that. Um, last time we talked about what it means to listen and to hearken, and it is like one who, on the knock of the door, comes to listen uh, to who it is. It is the definition of a porter being on duty. And that's what we talked about. A porter is a person stationed at the door or gate to admit or assist those that are entering. And that is where we left off. Um, and part two is being suited and booted. So you are a priest of Yah. You are a porter. You are at the door what should you be wearing? What should be um, your uniform at the door? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to start at verse 3. I'll leave when you get there. Hallelujah. See, I don't want to miss anything, but Lord, I have a lot here. So while you are getting there, we were instructed by the elders to be strong in Yah and the power of his might. We were instructed to stand against the walls of the adversary. We are called to remember that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. For this cause, we take up the full armor of the Most High. If any of this artillery is missing, we find ourselves exposed and subject to the enemy's scheme. We will be ineffective doorkeepers if we are standing there naked. We must be able to stand at the door, and we can't stand there naked or dressed improperly. In 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in Elohim. For pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing, that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yah, bringing every thought into captivity 
to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is revealed. Um, Abraham's children do the work of Abraham. Go to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Abraham's children do the works of Abraham. And the whole chapter is really good, but we're going to both focus on verses 39 and 40. John 8, 39. John 8, 39. Yeah, it's all good. John chapter 8. John 8, and starting at verse 39. It says, They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Yeshua said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the work of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from Elohim. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10. Hallelujah, when you get there. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand within the evil day, and having done all to stand. Therefore, stand, having girded your waist with truth. I'll keep going, but we're going to focus on these. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So, we are starting with stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Um, and I wasn't going back there, but I needed to go back there. Um, but the law of truth. You can never avoid the truth. You can only delay the day you deal with it. When truth is embraced and accepted, it displaces lies and frees a person from fear and misunderstanding, elevating and ennobling the individual. Truths truth build together into beliefs, constructs, and perspectives that together form our understanding of reality, leading us back to trust in the Creator. In trust, we open our hearts and experience the indwelling Spirit of God that transforms and ennobles us to be beings of love rather than beings of selfishness. All truth comes from God, and if followed, will lead back to God. When truth is rejected, our understanding is confused. The mind is damaged, the heart is hardened, and we slowly become less capable of understanding reality, mm -hmm. the truth of God's kingdom, and the world around us. Such individuals will one day face the truth, but will be, but it will be painful and destructive to them as they still hate the truth. 
and want to flee from them, even begging the mountains to hide them from reality. Mm. But he's saying, put it on as a belt to wear truth. Um, the loins, having your loins girded, is a part of the body between the hips and the lower ribs, especially regarded as the seat of physical strength and generative power. Right. He's saying, have your loins girded with truth. In John 17, 17, Yeshua prayed for us that he said, sanctify them in thy truth. Thy word is true. Hallelujah. In John 8 and 32, it says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Mm -hmm. Psalms 51 and 6 says, behold, you desire truth in the inward parts. You desire truth in the inward parts. Anne Lopes, in a book um, that I'm reading, the Daniel Prayer, says that our outward gestures reveal an inner attitude. Our outward gestures reveal an inner attitude. Let's go to Genesis 24. Genesis 24. Genesis 24, starting in verse 27, is the first time that truth is used. Verse 27, and this is the story of Abraham's servant going to find him a wife. And that what he prayed, and then how the father responded. And so, um, we'll start in 26. Then the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Bless me, the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his mercy and his truth toward my master. As for me, being on the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brother. So that is the first time it's used. Um, truth is a met, and when you break it down or you get to the root word, it's like a man. Uh, and that is first used in Genesis 15. Genesis 15 and 6. And so God's covenant with Abraham is talked about in the chapter 15. And in verse 6, he said, we're talking about Abraham, and he believed the Lord and, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. So the root word for truth is attached to our believing or our faith. Okay. So how can we effectively use the word to free someone when we still believe the lie? To keep defending the lie. Uh, where are we going defending a lie? We're going nowhere. It's hard to wear the belt of truth when we haven't addressed the lie. And that's just the first thing he tells you to put on is truth. And so we think about our brothers and sisters who are not, um, who have no knowledge of the truth because we know that all truth comes from the source. And so there's no way to be dressed. Because the first thing he tells you to put on is truth. That's your start, is the truth. Um, and just for example, I, I know that people hear me say deconstruct race all the time. And that's because that's literally what he told me to do. And I know it could probably be a and that's okay. Um, because it almost makes me appear anti black. I get that. Um, I get that. Okay. Um, but if, if you see where I'm going, when I say deconstruct race, um, I liken that to 
the father had to ask Eve, who told you you were naked? Who told you you were black? And that was all that you were. Who minimized you to a color? Wow. <laughs> so they constructed a system based on a false narrative to oppress, belittle, divide, and hide the truth. Black according to the world, but who are you according to Christ? So if, if, if I'm only stopping there, then I can't get to who you really are. And so we miss our identity because we're clinging to a term from an oppressor. So that's why I'm like, mm -hmm. right. Right. Go ahead. Not because I'm anti-black, but because it's a lie and you yeah. minimize me. Right. Go ahead. Tell it like it is. Right. Um, in the book, The Fallacy of Race, Montague says, we must constantly be on guard against subscribing to a lexicon of unsound terms of which we elect ourselves guardians and make ourselves the prisoner of our own vocabulary. That's good right there now. That's good. Our word being So you're telling me that my whole worth is determined by my flesh. That's a lie. We have way too much word to repeat that. Being comfortable with the lie will destroy our soul. And we are never fully dressed for battle without the truth. Christianity's missing key component is truth. So no one there, no one there is ready to fight. You just keep like when I say something, the boys tell a partial truth. But if I catch them in that, then they got to cover it with this, and then catch them. So it's just a layer upon layer. A lot of a lot. Christianity's missing key component is truth. Hebrews. Um, we are selfish and are missing facts as well. We are quick to say, my people, my community, my this, my that, my, 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 my when he says go forth to the nation. So am I supposed to hoard something? Like my kids call dibs on the front seat. Dibs, I got dibs. How you gonna call dibs on salvation? How you gonna call shotgun on salvation? Right. <laughs> like we miss, well, and I always tell the kids when they argue with something, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Please stop. <laughs> Leave it alone. But we miss the fact that he's building a kingdom of priests. He's building a kingdom of priests. Exodus 19 and 6. Uh, our people are comfortable in the bed. Our people are comfortable asleep. Roughly two-thirds, pretty much, are comfortable being asleep, and they have no interest in things that deal with righteousness. Mm -hmm. So we can keep tapping on them. Like, the Father knows that they are stiff-necked. That has been defined and determined a long... they comfortable. they comfortable. The father has 800 count sheets with plush stuff and ice this, and we want the, the 100 count, the 50 count, the can't stay on the bed, the broken in. We don't want because we're not going to invest in it. There is no interest in it for us. We don't see the return. We talked about that in Bible study. So we have to remember that we work for him now. We work for him now. Breastplate of righteousness. And um, we'll be in Ephesians and we'll just jump back and forth. Ephesians. Go back to 6 and we are on verse 14. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. Um, you don't have to turn there, but in Genesis. 15 and 6, we just left there. He said, he believed the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Righteousness is the quality or state of being righteous. That's a great definition. Um, righteous is to be characterized by uprightness or mortality. 
uh, right or justifiable, acting in an upright, moral way, virtuous. And to be right is in accordance with what is good, proper, or just, in conformity with fact, reason, truth, or some standard or principle that is correct, correct in judgment, opinion, or action. So, if truth comes from the source, then the only way to be righteous is to do what he deems is right. So you can't avoid his commandments. You can't avoid Shabbat. You can't avoid choosing to be, like, you can't avoid any of those things if you want to be on the side of righteousness. There is no other way. Um, in James 2 and 23, just make that note. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. Another note, Galatians 3 and 6, even as Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. It was counted to him. And you see it over and over again. Like Paul makes this very clear. Like he says it multiple times. He believed, counted as righteousness. He believed, accounted as righteousness. Not he believed and sat and did not obey. Because that does not equate to accounting it as righteousness. In Romans 4 and 13, just make that note, for the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Romans 4 and 3, for what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. If you are the seed of Abraham, you will do what Abraham did. Mm -hmm. To be deemed as righteous in this generation, we must walk in accordance with the one who defines what is just, proper, good, and then do those things. And then do those things. Um, in behavior analysis talk, we always talk about we always talk about when you define a behavior, like you have to say, like, what does that look like? Like you have to define it because if you don't define, if I don't define, I have to define making your bed. I tell the boys that everything is tough. There's no white showing from the mattress and that there are no windows. I've clearly defined it. If you don't do that, then you have not made your bed. To get dressed means you brush your teeth, you wash your face, you do your hair, you have clothes that are not wrinkled. It has been defined. I don't worry much about matching socks, we'll go to the same level real quick. But it's defined. If you love me, keep my commandments. It's defined. He's given you how to operate in that. Obey me. If you love me, you'll obey me. It's operationally defined. If you want to be righteous, you believe, but we know belief is not a westernized version of I believe in my mind, but there's no action to follow. Mm -hmm. okay. um, at Exodus 20, Yah's expectations are clearly defined in the Ten Commandments. There is no gray area there. It's operationally defined. If we are getting technical, Yeshua's expectations are clearly defined as he is the word of God and they are one. Um, and I just kind of, it's okay. Um, new covenant does not mean a new law, so we can't say it's done away. There's a new covenant. He didn't say there's a new law. <laughs> there's a new covenant. Um, so you can't say it's done away. Say it again. There's a new covenant. He didn't say new law. So that means. All right. Be fitted with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Um, let's just jump on in that. Uh, but we, we hit on it during tour class. 
um, that peace is shalom, and it means completeness or soundness. And soundness is to be free from injury or disease, free from flaw, defect, or decay, stable, secure, reliable, free from error, fallacy, or misapprehension, or that that means misunderstanding, and to be legally valid. Shalom, soundness. Um, let's go to Romans 10. And completeness is having all the necessary parts, all the necessary parts, and he wants us to be complete. So in Romans chapter 10, because he uses this language, but this language has been used before, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Romans 10 and 11. I'm sorry. All right. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Let's go to Isaiah 52. As it is written, that means you've got to go back and find where it's written. Isaiah 52. <coughs> Somebody have one? Yes. Shall will you read chapter 52? Yes. 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 O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust, arise, and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O beautiful daughter of Zion. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. For thus saith um, Yehud Elohim, my people went now aforetime into Egypt to, to sojourn there, and the Assyrians oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, what have I here, said Yehud, that my people is taken away for not? They that rule over them make them to howl, said Yehud, and my name continually every day is blasphemy. Therefore my people shall know my name, therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, mm -hmm. that publisheth peace, mm -hmm. that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, mm -hmm. that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Mm -hmm. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye, for the Lord shall bring again Zion. Mm -hmm. Break forth into joy, sing together ye waste places of Jerusalem. For you will have comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. Okay. You will have made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. Oh, yeah. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of God. <coughs> yes. And the title of Isaiah 52 is God redeems Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And verse 7 says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who bring good news who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your Elohim reigns. Let's go to Nahum chapter 1. Nahum chapter 1. Yeah. 
main room is between Micah and Rebecca. I know, right? Here, you got that. Read that whole chapter, please. For real. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I said it last time, but I'll stop. Nahum, chapter 1, verse 1. The burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Elkishite. Yah is jealous. Yahweh, revenge. Yahweh, revenge, and is furious. Yah will take vengeance on his adversaries. And he reversed wrath for his enemies. Okay, he re he reserves wrath for who? His enemies. For who? His enemies. So, in order to uh, not get his wrath, you must not be defined or deemed as an enemy. As an enemy. So you got to be righteous according to his standard. Mm -hmm. But the wrath is reserved for enemies. Enemies. Okay. Yah is slow to anger. And great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. Mm. Yah hath his way in the whirlwind, in the storm, and the clouds, or the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea, and maketh it dry. He drieth up all the rivers. Bashan languish, and Carmel, and the flower of Lebanon languish. The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world. And all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? Mm -hmm. Who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? Mm -hmm. His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. Yah is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Hallelujah. For with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof. And darkness shall pursue his enemies. What pursues his, his enemies? Darkness shall pursue his enemies. Mm -hmm. What do you imagine against Yah? He will make another end affliction, shall not rise up in the second time. For while they be folded together as thorns, while they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as stubble fully dry. Mm -hmm. There is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against Yah. A wicked counselor, thus saith Yahweh, though they be quiet and likewise many, Yet thus they shall be cut down when he shall pass through. Mm -hmm. Though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. Hallelujah. For now I will I break his yoke from off thee, mm -hmm. and will burst thy bonds in sunder. Hallelujah. And Yah hath given a commandment concerning thee, that no more of thy name be sown. Out of the house of thy gods will I cut off the graven image mm -hmm. and the molten image. I will make thy grave, for thou art vile. Behold upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publishes peace. O Yehudah, keep thy solemn feast, perform thy vows, for the wicked shall no more pass through thee, he is utterly cut off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So our feet should be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And he knew that it was written, and we have to go back and see what was written about that peace. So, shield of faith. Shield of faith. So, it says, taking the shield of faith in which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Our faith should be in his faithfulness. Um, we won't read all of these, but these are just uh, verses on that. Um, his faithfulness. Let me go to end the shield. So I'm going to go to Genesis 15 and 1. Genesis 15 and 1. It says, And after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. So he's telling us, like, in Ephesians, we're being encouraged to have on the entire armor. Not once do they say anything about Zizis. 
or how long your dress is or how long your hair is or if you have on pants. That is not mentioned in here because he says that the fight is not a physical one, it's a spiritual one. Yeah. All right, um, we might go through all of them. It is a lot. Second Samuel 22. Second Samuel 22. Well, we, is anybody want to just call a dibs on the verse? I'm just passing that. Just say read it. Okay. Hear me, y'all. We'll get Psalms 3 and 3 and 5 and 12. Uh, Nina, Psalms 18 and 2, that second line, that's the no, number 1, 2, 3, 4, the fifth line. Can you have the fifth line? Psalms 18 and 2, yeah. verse 30. Okay, thank you so much. Um, what's the third shot? What is it? Like? You just Make Chris read. That was an accident. Okay, okay. You got the line underneath it. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. And all over the world. Thank you. Okay, appreciate that. Anything not covered, just have the thing ready. Uh, so, 2 Samuel 22 1 through 3 says, Then David spoke to the Lord. Uh, spoke to the Lord the word of this song on the day when the Lord had delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my strength in whom I trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my savior, you save me from violence. Verse 4, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. And at the end of that chapter, which we almost end, 31 to 36 says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? God is my strength and power, and he makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me on the high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your gentleness has made me great. Hallelujah. Psalms 3 and 3. Psalms 3 and 3 and Psalms 5 12. Yes, sir. Psalms 3 and 3 and Psalms 5 12. But thou, O Yahuwah, art a shield for me, oh, yeah. my glory yes. and lifter of mine head. Oh, yeah. For thou, Yahuwah, wilt bless the righteous with favor, wilt thou compass him with a shield. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Psalm 18 and 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Oh, yeah. And then Psalms 18 and 30. As for God, his way is perfect. The world of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. Hallelujah. And Psalms 18 and 35. You give me, you give me your shield of victory, mm. and your right hand sustains me. Oh, yeah. You stoop down to make me great. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, 28 and 7. Yahuwah is my strength and my shields. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my songs, I will praise him. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Psalm 33 and 20. Uh, it says, Our soul waiteth for the Lord. Hallelujah. He is our help and our shield. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. 
Psalms 84 and 11. For Yahuwah Elohim is my son and shield. Yahuwah will give grace and glory. No good thing will be withheld from them that walk uprightly. Mm. Hallelujah. Psalm 91 and 4. Uh-huh. He shall cover thee with his spells. Yeah. And under his wings shalt thou, right. tru uh, shalt thou trust. Mm -hmm. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Yeah. yeah. And so when you see everybody in the yard with Psalms 91, Psalms 91, Psalms right. 91. Right. That's right. Uh, <laughs> but how do you trust it? Are mm -hmm. you trusting? No. Right. Like plastering it on your door means absolutely nothing if you're not applying it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you haven't even really read the verse because something should trigger a turn. All right. Mm -hmm. You know, but you see it everywhere. Yard, I mean, you see Psalms 91 everywhere, but he is a shield to those who trust. He is a shield to those who Hallelujah. trust. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Confidence in him. Yes. Um, okay. Psalms 115, 9 through 11. Oh, Israel, trust in you will. He is their help and their strength, or their shield. Mm -hmm. O house of Aaron, trust in Yahuwah. Yes. He is their help and their shield. Uh -huh. yeah. He that fear Yahuwah, trust in Yahuwah. Yeah. He is their help and their shield. Hallelujah. 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 Psalms 119, 114. Mm -hmm. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Yes. Psalms 144 and 2. My loving kindness and my fortress. My high tower and my deliverer, yes. my shield and the one in whom I take refuge, Hallelujah. who subdues my people under me. Mm. Proverbs 2 and 7. Yes. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. Mm. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. Hallelujah. Proverbs 30 and 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Yes. Hallelujah. And a definition. Shield is a broad piece of defensive armor carried on the arm, one that protects or defends. So in order to have God as a shield, he has to be really, really, really close to you. Mm -hmm. And it's defensive. Like that's what you know about defense. defense. So the shield is a defense. He says you'll need it for the fiery darts. Like it's going to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Personal reflective peace. So I'm going through this and I have to, before I can come to you, I have to ask the Father to address my armor. Where are there weak places? Where am I not wearing it? Um, and that's one thing he said, that your inconsistency has something to do with your shield of faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't, okay. That's cool. You work on that, <laughs> and I'll let you work on that. But specifically, my inconsistencies deal with my shield of faith, which makes sense because over and over, do you not believe? Do you not believe? Yeah. He marveled at their disbelief. Do you not have confidence yes. in me? Do you not have confidence in me? So over and over and over again. So a buckler is just a small round shield. Um, and so it's just, but you see shield and buckler interchangeably. So faith in his faithfulness, believing that he can raise the dead, spare the righteous, and is a protector of those who fully trust in him. If you believe, because if we go to Revelation, it says that there's fire reserves for the cowardly and the unbelieving. All right. Helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. Let's go to First Peter, please. First Peter. First Peter. I'll tell you when I got this. I got this not too long ago, like not too long after Pentecost. And I just, I wrote a little bit down and I was like, Jeremy, I think I kind of got a message, but you know, but you know. 
Um, and every now and then I'll wake up in the morning and put a little piece together, put a little piece together. And then last week he was like, you're up. I was like, okay, already, already suited and booted and ready to go. It was just some things that I needed to, that well, he, he wanted to finish. I had the concept, but he, like, he brought that together for today for such a time as this. And so, all glory to God. First Peter. And I invited my mom again. I'm just gonna keep knocking. Keep knocking. Right. And then she's gonna in the assembly. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> she called and said she ignored me three times. <laughs> All right, so first Peter chapter three, starting at verse 17. For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly were disobedient when once the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through the water. No. Water. There is also an antitype which now saves us. Baptism, uh, not the removal of the field to the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God through the resurrection of Yeshua HaMashiach, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. I have to read all that to read four. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of Elohim. And so we talk about our struggles, and we talk about things that we are going through, and what uh, the Father brought to mind was Hebrews 12 and 4. Hebrews 12 and 4. Hebrews 12 and 4. And I'll start in verse 3. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. Right, but you ain't going that hard. Like, you ain't, it's blood, you know, striving against sin. But we know who did. Luke 22 and 41. Luke 22 and 41. Like, no, you're, you're not. So, the hubby called a fast. Yes. He's not saying pray till there's drops of blood coming from your forehead. <laughs> so, you have not strived that hard to get rid of whatever it is. Like, you ain't going that hard. He does not. Because we're too comfortable. So Luke 22, 41, well, we'll start at 39. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives um, as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. So he is used to praying. He's used to praying. And when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And when he... And I'm sorry. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Mm -hmm. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Yeshua 
prayed, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. You have not resisted sin to the point of shedding blood. We are called to be like our teacher. That's why everything is under him. Like everything. Every single thing has been placed under his authority. That's why we are to bring every thought under Christ. Because he he went hard in the pain, as they say. Every day. And he tells us to be perfect like your, not even like me, be perfect like your father. Um, the helmet of salvation is the mind of Christ. The helmet of mind of, of sorry, the helmet of salvation is the mind of Christ. Sword of the Spirit. Then he says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Yah. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Yah. And y'all can just write these there. I'm not making me turn, but I'm going to read. Mark 7, 13, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which you have handed down, as many such things you do. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. But you have made the word of God of none effect in your tradition. Mm, okay. Do you have a sword? That's right. Mm. That's, it. That's right. Mm. Now this, Luke 8 and 11, now this parable, now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. If you don't have the word, you can't have fruit. You don't have a seed, which means no stem, no root, no fruit. Mm. Mm. Luke 8, 21. But he answered and said to them, My mother and my brother are these who hear the word of God and do it. Okay. All right. Hebrews 4 and 12. Hebrews 4 and 12. Hebrews 4 and 12. We'll start in 11. I'll leave when you get there. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest let anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, uh -huh. but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. The sword of the Spirit is the word of God. How big is your sword, and are you using it correctly? How big is your sword, and are you using it correctly? Our hands, our mind, and our heart must be ready to cut like Peter, but not cut like Peter. What do you mean? In John 18 and 10, then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So before verses after, in Acts 2, 37, and when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? So you got to cut like Peter, but not cut like Peter. Um, yes. In 2 Corinthians 2 and 17, for we are not as so many peddling the word of God, 
but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. So there are some, of course, that we know that tell the word. Um, in 2 Corinthians 4 and 2, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, okay, come on. but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So no, we're not peddling the word, and we're not handling it deceitfully. Because you'll end up cutting yourself. That's what it's for. Misaligned and mishandled. First Thessalonians 2 and 13. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing, because you have received the word of God, which you heard from us. You welcome it, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. The word works in those who do what? They believe. They believe. But it also has to be received in truth. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Starting in verse 1. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One through seven. Isaiah 49, verse 1 through 7. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken ye people from far. Yah hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me. And it made me a polished shaft, in his quiver hath he hid me. And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with Yahweh and my work with my Elohim. Mm -hmm. And now, saith Yah, that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Yahweh again to him, though Israel be not gathered yet. Shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength? Mm. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Yaakov mm. and to restore the preserved of Israel. Oh, yeah. I will give also thee for a light unto the Gentiles, so to the Gentiles, Stop calling. to the Gentiles, Stop calling. Gentiles, Please. that thou mayest be my salvation mm. unto the end of the earth. Mm -hmm. Thus saith Yah, mm. the Redeemer of Israel and mm. his Holy One, yes. to him whom man despised, mm. to him whom the nation abhors, mm. to a servant of rulers, mm. kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship because of Yah that is faithful, yes. and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Hallelujah. Isaiah 49, 1 through 7. Hallelujah. Thank you. So then we say, like, why? Why is being dressed important? Why is this armor important? Um, this is not the armor of a Roman soldier. Like, we see that all the time. Like, um, it's the armor of Yah's priests and servants of Yeshua. This, this is priestly gear here that we're talking about. Um, go to Jonah. Jonah chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 7. And chapter 1 just jumps off of Jonah's disobedience. Uh, in verse 7, it said, And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, 
that we may know from whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. And they said to him, Please tell us, for what cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? Uh -huh. And where do you come from? Uh -huh. What is your country? Uh -huh. And of what people are you? Uh -huh. And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, yeah. and I fear Yahuwah, uh -huh. the Elohim of heaven, who made the sea and dry yeah, ground. Yeah. Who are you? Uh -huh. I am a Hebrew, uh -huh. one from beyond with a message from above. Uh -huh. Repent and believe the gospel yeah. for the kingdom of Yah is at hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's our identity. That's who we are. Uh-huh. And therefore you need to be dressed. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Isaiah 59. We have to be dressed like our king. Isaiah 59. Shut up. Will you read Isaiah 59? I want to do one chapter, please. Yes, sir. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short, that it cannot save. Neither is the ear heavy, that it cannot hear. For your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Okay. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue have muttered perverseness. None call it for justice. None call it for what? Justice. Not to lack life matter. Mm. That's not a call for justice. Right. It's not, and you'll see why. Go ahead. None call it for justice, nor any plea for truth. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. So it can't be a call for justice because they're not pleading truth. Mm. Right. Mm. Go ahead. They trust in vanity mm. and speak lies. Go ahead. They conceive mischief mm. mm. and bring forth the Go ahead. They hatch cockatrice's eggs mm. and weave the spider's web. Mm. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, mm -hmm. and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Mm. Their webs shall not become garments, mm. neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Mm. Their works are works of iniquity, mm. and the act of violence is in their hands. Mm. Their, their feet run to evil. Their feet run where? Run to evil. Mm. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. Mm. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Their thoughts are what? Thoughts of iniquity. Mm. Wasting and destruction <coughs> in their paths. Mm. The way of peace they know not. Mm. And there is no judgment in their goings. Mm. They have made them crooked. They have made them crooked paths. Mm. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's absolutely no armor. Mm. None. Amen. Go ahead. Therefore is judgment far from us. Mm. Neither doth justice overtake us. Mm. We wait for light, mm. but behold obscurity for brightness, but we walk in darkness. Mm. We grow we grow for the wall like the blind, mm. and we grow as if we had no eyes. Mm. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. Mm. We roar all like bears and born sore like doves. Mm. We look for judgment, but there is none. There is what? There is none. There is none. Mm. For salvation, but it is far off from us. Mm. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, mm -hmm. and our sins testify against us. Mm -hmm. For our transgressions are with us. Yes. And as for our iniquities, we know them. Mm. In transgression, in transgressing and lying against the Lord. In the, what? In transgressing and lying mm. against the Lord, departing away from our God, mm. speaking oppression and revolt, mm. conceiving and uttering from the heart uh, words of falsehood. What? Words of falsehood. Mm. And judgment is turned away backward, mm. and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, mm. and he that departed from evil maketh himself upright. Mm -hmm. What happened? And 
the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Mm -hmm. And he saw that there was no man, mm -hmm. and wanted that there was no intercessor. No intercessor. What did he do? <laughs> What did he do? Okay. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him, yes. and his righteousness it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate. Say that one more time. He put on righteousness as a breastplate. So he's not telling us to do anything that he hasn't already done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Say that again. For he put on righteousness as a bless as a breastplate. Yes. And a helmet of salvation upon his head. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, mm. and was clad with zeal as a cloak. Mm. According to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries. Okay, so he didn't tell us to put on vengeance for clothing. He's saying, you be dressed right, right. and I got the rest of it. Uh, that's what it said. Tell him that's what it said. Yeah. Simple. That's all right. Go ahead. Wow. Uh, according to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversary. Mm. Recompense to his enemies. But you cannot be deemed as an enemy. You have to look different, act different, sound different, walk different, talk different. So he knows the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To the islands, he will repay recompense. Mm. So shall they fear the name of Yahuwah from the west yes. and his glory from the rising of the sun. Hallelujah. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, mm. the spirit of Yahuwah shall lift up a standard against them. Let's right. show them. Right. Go say that one more time. Uh, Yahuwah from, uh, so shall the fear of the name of Yahuwah from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Hallelujah. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, yes. the spirit of Yahuwah shall lift up a standard against them. Hallelujah. And the Redeemer shall yes. come to Zion, Hallelujah. and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob. Yeah. 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 As for me, this is my covenant with yeah. you, Sem mm. Yahuwah, my spirit that is upon thee, mm. and my words which I have put in thy mouth, mm. shall not depart out of thy mouth, mm. nor out of the mouth of the seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, Sem yes. Yahuwah, from henceforth and forever. Mm. Hallelujah. You are Abraham's seed, you will do the work of Abraham. Abraham. Mm. Hallelujah. But before we can go forth as a nation, we need clean garments. Go to Zechariah chapter 3. I think we read this in Torah class. Not too long ago. Thank you. All right, Zechariah chapter 3. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing for the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. The adversary is an accuser of the brethren. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. We have a high priest standing for the angel of the Lord in filthy garments. And was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. And I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. And they put a clean turban on his head, and they put the clothes on him, and the angel of the Lord stood by. The angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways, yeah. if you will keep my command, then you shall also judge my house, and likewise have charge of my courts. And I will give you places to walk among those who stand here. Hear, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, 
for they are a wondrous son. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant the branch. For behold, the stone which I have laid before Joshua, upon the stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave as an inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. We must have clean garments. In Genesis, and they're up here if you want to write them down. Genesis 35 and 2, then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. Exodus 28 and 2, and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, for glory and for beauty. Um, Exodus 28 and 4, and these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate and an ephod and a robe and a broader coat, a mitre, a girdle, and they shall make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, and his sons that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Ecclesiastes 9 and 8, let thy garments be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment. Isaiah 61 and 10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. Mm. Revelation 16 and 5. Revelation 16, sorry, 16 and 15, uh, Revelation 16 and 15, and we'll start at 12. Hallelujah when you get there. Hallelujah. Right. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are spirits of demons, performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, and his response to all that is, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garment clean, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Romans 13 and 12, and they're, they're up there to get on the screen. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Galatians 3 and 27, for as many of you as has been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Ephesians 4 and 24, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and holiness. Colossians 3. I remember that order. Um, Galatians, General Electric Power Company. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. Mm. <laughs> 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 um, Colossians 3. And we'll start in 8. Hallelujah when you get there. <laughs> but now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, 
since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Jew nor Greek, circumcised nor uncircumcised, Bavarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Yahuwah rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do it in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, giving thanks to Yahuwah, the Father, through him. So, suited and booted, we fight. But we must be dressed to fight. We gotta be dressed. So, the first round we talked about being at the door um, and being quarters and being able to let Christ in when he knocks and being um, witnesses to our families. And this time we're talking about what you need to be wearing to be standing at the door. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9 and 26. Therefore I run, thus not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. Like, you see those fights where they just swing in the air and hit nothing. That's, un, that's not strategic. That's not planned. You're unprepared. You're not ready. You will lose. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of etern on eternal life, to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And in 1 Timothy 4 and 7, it says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Um. It's one thing that Father was dealing with me this week, and I was talking about the consistencies and my shield of faith and stuff like that. And I was cleaning the mirror um, yesterday, and it was, but, but you don't stop trying. Like, I fell at the 5 a.m. all the time, like all the time. <laughs> and I get it sometimes, and I'm off sometimes, and I get it sometimes, and I'm off sometimes. <laughs> but he said, you never quit. You don't just say, oh, it's just not going to happen. No, I'm going to keep trying. And I'm going to be consistent for probably a week and a half. But eventually, I went to Walmart and I got one of those old school warm pots where the bill was like, just like really loud. And not phone, like really loud. <laughs> and I got it and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm up now. Ain't no one going back to bed. And I put it far away where I have to get up to turn it off. I know. Like, he said, you don't quit trying. Like, you've never given up on it. Even though you failed at the team, you never quit. He wants us not to quit. Um, so, let's get all those. All right, so what he said was to lay hold to eternal life. Lay hold to eternal life. Um, Jeremy Yahoo, if you could do John 17, 1 through 3. Uh, Jeremy, if you could do 1 John 2, 24 through 25. Um, first one is going to be John 17, 1 through 3. Yes, sir. John 17, verses 1 through 3. 
These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to the heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. And thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that thou might know thee, the only true Elohim, and Yahshua HaMashiach, who, Hamashiach, who have, thou hast sent, whom thou hast sent. Are we, uh, Jeremy, verse 9, 24, 25. 1 John, second chapter. Verses 24 through 25. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. Hallelujah. Uh, Shy that we can get those up there. First John 5. <laughs> Yes. And starting in verse 10. Yes, sir. Thank you. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that Elohim gave of his son. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the record that Elohim hath given to us eternal life. Mm -hmm. and this life is in his son. Mm -hmm. He that hath the son hath life. Mm -hmm. He that hath not the son hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of the Lord, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of the Lord. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Yes. And we know that the Son of Elohim has come and have given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his son Yeshua Mashiach. This is the true Elohim and eternal life. Hallelujah. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so we talked about the armor and the shield and the Feet shod and the helmet and the breastplate and the belt of truth and the shield of faith and having all that. Um, but to truly be dressed, we have to have clean hearts. Um, let's go to Psalms 51 and 10. Psalms 51 and 10. And the whole chapter is um, a prayer of repentance. Um, how do you want to get there? How do you want to get there? Psalms 51 and 10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O Yahuwah, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Um, Looks like mm -hmm. Lev, Lev Tahor Bara Li Elohim. First, Na Nakon Kadash. This is one last word here. It's possible. Five two. This last word. Yeah, very last word about the dots. No, so you skip the first one. Bob Carl will be. Oh, you read it all. Yeah, read all of them. Go ahead. Lev Tahor, Bagrali, Elohim, Bagrak, Nahom, Chadesh, uh, the uh, 
Bika Bika Rabi. Okay. Okay. It's within me. Spirit within me. All right. So when we look at that, um, create is bara. And I looked up that word in Hebrew, bara, but it means to cut, to carve, or to form by cutting. So when we say created me a clean heart, to cut, to carve, to form by cutting. Um, Lev, inner man, mind, will, heart, understanding. Um, the renew is kadash, is to be new, renew, or repair. And I was looking at Barah because I was thinking about uh, Bereshit Barah Elohim. And so then you see this, but for him to create something, if you're creating in me a new heart, you have to cut, carve, or form by cutting, which uh, made me think about what he's always saying. No, I'll put it on band two. We survived that. We got a German. Um, Deuteronomy 10, 16, circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. Deuteronomy 30 and 6, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. To create in me a new heart, has something has to be cut off. The Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou may live. So this cutting, this circumcision brings life. Um, Jeremiah 4 and 4. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskin of your heart that uh, ye men of Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doing. So there is sin in the foreskin. Ooh, you gotta cut that off. Mm. That means there's sin there. As doorkeepers, as priests of Yah, we must be dressed appropriately. We may we may be missing pieces, and are some of our pieces they could be dirty. The word says that we can come boldly before him to acquire grace and mercy in our time of need. We have to allow him to assess our armor today. We have to ask him for what we need in order to be able to stand. And we need to ask him for what he knows that we need that we don't know what we need. So we, again, have to allow Yeshua to assess our armor and our hearts. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to worship for 14 minutes. Um, and if you need prayer or help, you're more than welcome to come down. Um, but this is you and him. This is you and him. And this is reflecting on your armor your pieces, what's missing, what's broken, what needs repaired, what needs to be cleaned up. Because he says that we can come to him and he will give us what we need. Um, and so you know where you are and you know what you need. Um, but it's it's four, it's four songs, it's 14 minutes. Okay? Um, and before we do that, I'm going to pray, but I want to get the playlist up. So, um, jo Josiah, you can you can stop it. Mm -hmm.